pieces of this work as a medical provider is understanding that in the world of youth care around gender, there just isn't consensus. And that's challenging, but I think it's changing also. So, I mean, it's certainly when I first started doing this work, I got a lot more pushback than I do now. And I think as the, we see the standards of care getting revised uh, repeatedly, and, uh, seeing more standards of care like UCSF um, and other places, there is an acknowledgement of that very thing that young people do know what they want and that um, you know some people are gonna make this decision it might not be right for them later on, but that doesn't, it doesn't play a role in that decision making up front. So it is changing. People are having a lot of conversations. Just a little example, in 2011, the very first WPATH conference that I ever went to, um, I, I, I was like, wait, what do you mean 16? Wait, we don't ask anyone else to have puberty at 16, only if you're trans. And I was like, oh, you're not back in California, you know, and that was true. And then the next time I went to, to, to WPATH, um, the, which was this last time, or maybe there was one in between there, but anyway, I was in Amsterdam, and all the people from the U.S. were like, can you believe the Europeans wait until 16? Oh my God, what are they thinking? And I was like, what, really? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Now we're all in that batch from the U.S. So I think it really is changing, and you and you see that reflected in both the um, indoctrination and about all the commentary about uh, the revisions and all of that stuff. But I think people are just like more and more doing the work more, Often, and so they're realizing like that's not reasonable to wait until 16. Like you can't actually put out a protocol that says block in the beginning of puberty and wait until 16 for hormones because that's a seven year gap for some people, which actually is not healthy for bone development. I also think though that as a parent, if, if your kid is telling you they need something and you're gonna join your kid and say, I'm gonna trust that my kid knows it's like part of your job as a parent, part of your noise, is you have to go in there and you have to demand of that doctor that they do something because that doctor is a There are providers who are fearful and they make decisions from the place of fear. And part of your job as a parent is to propel them to make a decision outside of the fear. The insurance companies. Yeah. Oh, it's. Well, like Joe's on it, insurance job is to say no. Like their job is to deny. And our job is to pay, right? So yeah, for sure. 